Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. I have a really fascinating video today for you because not only am I going to talk about this BMW Z4 or Z4 compared against the GR Supra, I'm also going to explain to you as an engineer exactly what it means to share a platform, which is what is happening between the Z4 and the Supra. They share the same engine, the same powertrain, and what we call the same platform, yet the two are very different because one is a convertible and one is a sports coupe. And this so-called platform sharing is perhaps one of the most mysterious and most confusing concept for many of you because it doesn't seem to make sense that they spend all this time to share a platform and make the external panels and the interior different and yet they're still built in the same factory. So why do they do this? What is the point of doing this? And exactly how does it work? I'm going to explain all that to you through the eyes of the BMW Z4 that I have right here. Let's go. Welcome back. So I have the BMW Z4 here, or Z4, depending on which country you live. I'm gonna call it Z4 for now. And I have a lot of respect for this vehicle because I've owned a GR Supra for two years and I absolutely love that thing in terms of the engine, the powertrain, even the handling and the ride and so forth. It was a really perfect two-door sports car. So it's really interesting for me to do a comparison with this one because Z4 is fundamentally similar to the Supra but has a very different character and obviously this is a convertible versus sports coupe for the Supra. Do I like this one better or the Supra? Well, it depends on what you're looking for, but I do admit the Z4 feels more refined, a little bit more mature, it feels more upscale, and for the most part, I prefer the design and the styling of this one. And of course, this is a convertible, so given the choice in summertime, in a beautiful day like this, I'm going to prefer to drive the Z4 compared to the Supra. But yet, the two are almost identical in terms of the engine, the transmission, even the suspension and the braking and the steering mechanism. So why would the car companies do that? Well, it is to reduce the cost and the time it takes to develop these vehicles because otherwise neither the Z4 nor the Supra may exist today because it costs too much money to produce these two vehicles and yet the volume is very low so it makes no ROI or return on investment sense. And that's why they've done that. In fact, you should be aware that the two models are also built in the exact same factory in Austria, in Europe, by a company called Magna, which is a Canadian engineering company. And that factory actually produces parts like the Mercedes G-Wagon as well, so it's a highly respected, a very engineering-focused uh, company and a factory, and that's where they produce the Z4 and the Supra on the exact same line. So you know that the manufacturing quality would be similar, but I still want to do a quick check on the Z4 in terms of external panels and external quality because I have the press vehicle this week. So in terms of the gap, I'm gonna measure the gap over here. It's about 3.5 millimeter between the front hood and the bumper area. A little bit wider at 3.9 millimeter. And I might also add that there's a little bit of a misalignment here, but not too noticeable. And the rest of the body is pretty well what I expect from a BMW level 3.8, 3.9, and a bit wider here at four millimeter because of the mechanism that we have for a convertible top. So the external panels are similar to what I expected. Uh, and similar to what I saw in Supra. All the panels line up, all the edges line up pretty good as well. And the paint job is really, really good, which is something I noticed there on the GR Supra as well. I think the Magna factory in Austria does a really good job of a paint job because it's got a really good gloss, very consistent, and you can see the reflection of the light and the panel and the orange peel is at a minimum. So I actually think that the paint job is really first class. But what about going back to this question of exactly how this shares is basic uh, method and approach and concept with the GR Supra. Well, what we call platform sharing is a little bit like what we call the skateboard design, which is a term that we often use in electric cars, but you can use the same terminology to describe what is happening between GR Supra and the BMW Z4, because everything underneath the car, which is the underbody, the front under and the rear under, those are the engineering terms that we use for the body mechanism, as well as everything that's attached to the underbody which is the engine that's cradled by the front under structure, suspension, the transmission that runs all the way through, obviously the braking mechanism front and back, and also the rear suspension. Those are all identical between Z4 and the GR Supra. And the reason why that makes so much sense is because those are the most expensive components in the vehicle design or vehicle development. So if you can share the engine, the transmission, the braking, the steering mechanism, the suspension, and the basic platform which runs underneath the car, then that really takes away most of the heavy cost. And with Toyota and BMW sharing those components with each other, well, then they can produce two cars 
for the cost of maybe not quite one car, but more like 1.5 car. So they do save substantial amount of money and time. And also that frees up Toyota from worrying about creating a whole new engine, which is the inline six right here, uh, and designing a whole new transmission and so forth. And they can really just focus on creating the new body and the design because one is a sports car, one is a convertible, and they can make the two cars look different and distinct and maybe even handle a little bit differently but they don't have to wait years and years to create a whole new sports car, which wouldn't have been possible under the current system at Toyota because they don't tend to approve vehicles for design and development if it's going to be a very low volume. So this was a win-win situation for BMW and Toyota to create two vehicles out of a singular platform, share the cost, share the platform engineering, and yet they can create two distinctively different vehicles for two markets under two brands uh, and then produce it in the same factory. So let me go back to the interior here for a second here to explain to you that even inside is actually very different between the Supra and, and the BMW. Which one do I prefer? Well, in terms of overall character and attributes, I have to admit I prefer the Z4, partly because it's a convertible and we have a beautiful summer day today. But also the Z4 looks more upscale. I think the design is better. It's a bit more modern and everything in terms of the controls and mechanism works a little bit better on this one than the Supra. I think the Supra has a simplified version of this one and I find it a little bit too simple and not as well designed as the Z4. Uh, in terms of driving character, by the way, which one do I prefer? Well, it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a vehicle that has the sportiest feel and the one that has kind of a raw sports car feel, then you might want to go with the Supra. But that one's a little bit more agile than this one. And that one feels closer to a pure sports car compared to this one's more of a grand touring sports car. It's a convertible as well, obviously, compared to Supra, which I think is more like a real sports car. But the two are still pretty similar because the engine is same, which is an inline six, as I mentioned. And it's a beautiful engine, by the way, on this BMW. So Toyota inherited some great components because BMW probably builds the best six cylinder engines in the world. Now, what other hints do I see that tells me that two cars share the exact same platform? Well, that has a lot to do with the dimensions. So let me grab some data and let me explain to you. So I'm back in front of the Z4 here. and I've got some data which shows that the Supra and Z4 do indeed share the exact same platform. So first, it's the length, width and height. They're almost the same, but not quite the same. The length is 170.2 inches for Z4 versus 172.5. For Supra, so Supra is just a little bit longer. The width is basically the same, 73.4 inches versus 73 inches for Supra. The height is a little bit higher on the Z4, it's 51.3 inches versus 50.9 inches on Supra because Supra sits a little bit lower due to the basic design of that model. And here is the biggest clue that the two models share the exact same platform, and that is a wheelbase, which is 97.2 inches. Why is that important? Well, the minute that you change the wheelbase, which affects the, um, the structure underneath, it makes it much more difficult and much more expensive to develop a different model from that same platform. There's so much cost associated with changing the wheelbase because once you change the wheelbase, then the suspension pieces, and then in terms of the drivetrain going underneath to the back, have to be re-engineered and therefore that takes extra time. But if you can keep the wheelbase exactly the same and then the platform underneath, which is again called the underbody, is exactly the same and therefore the suspension that's attached to those underbody structures are the same uh, and of course the engine and transmission being the same, then you can literally change the whole top above the underbody and then substantially reduce the cost and time it takes to develop two new models out of the same platform. That's why they do that. And it's always to do with the wheelbase. So whenever you see two similar models, what we call the sister model or brother models, and they have the exact same platform and the same engine and, and basically the same transmission, you can call those two vehicles the same platform shared vehicle, which is exactly what's happening between the GR Supra and the BMW Z4. So those are some of the dimensions I want to share with you. In terms of performance and engine, as you already know, it's the same engine as well. They're both the inline six-cylinder engine, perhaps the best six-cylinder engine in the world. And they both have the 382 horsepower and 369 pound-foot of torque. But the zero to 16 might be a little bit different. I think a little bit faster on this one at 3.5 seconds versus 3.7 seconds for Supra, just because there's slight difference in calibration. Um, but they both have a speed automatic. And as you already know, the Supra does come in manual transmission. This one does not, which surprised me. So once again, if you want the pure sports car with a manual transmission, you definitely want to go the GR Supra. 
But if you want a little bit more refined, a bit more upscale feel with a convertible top and open air feel, you definitely want to buy that Z4, which I really enjoy so far this week. So those are the differences I want to point out between GR Supra and Z4. And also, I hope this explained to you exactly what platform sharing is and why it is so important. And to quickly summarize, the two vehicles are considered to have the same platform when they share the same powertrain or similar powertrain, such as engine and transmission, but also uh, same suspension with different calibration, same steering mechanism, same braking mechanism, and then everything underneath is basically identical, which is the platform uh, between the two wheels with the same wheelbase. Everything else above the platform can be changed, just like Z4 versus Supra, and yet the two cars will still be considered the same vehicle or same platform vehicle. Now, could they be built in two different factories and still considered to be platform shared? Absolutely, the factory is not dependent on the platform sharing, but what you will find is that in most cases, 90% of the time, platform shared vehicles are built in the same factory, in the same line, because that's one of the reasons why they share the platform is also to reduce the manufacturing cost because they can be built by the same worker using the same method and they don't have to figure out or create two different lines or two different factories to produce two similar but different models. So that's the basic summary of what platform sharing is and I also want to just reiterate how much I really enjoy driving the Z4 and it showed me how much I missed having the GR Supra which is similar to this one but given the choice, if I were to buy either one of these vehicles today, you know what, I'm going to have to admit that I will pick the Z4 versus the Supra because the convertible top is such a wonderful environment to drive in. But also I prefer the overall feel and the refinement of the Z4 compared to GR Supra. That one feels a little bit too cramped and I keep hitting my head even though I'm not tall, getting in and out. Whereas on the Z4, obviously I don't have that problem because there's no roof if you can take the top down. So I hope you enjoyed my video. If you do, I appreciate it if you can give me a thumbs up, make some comments, and if you haven't done so yet, would you kindly subscribe as well. But until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.